What to do with my hands? The eternal question. <laughs> hey guys, it's Hugh Foster on the bass here. Time to show you another quick lick. And with this one, I think I've gone back to basics, you know, just, uh, just funk in E. <laughs> Before I start, just a quick note to say, if you wanna play along with that backing track and get the transcription in a PDF in tab and standard notation, please do head over to my Patreon and consider becoming a supporter. You know, there's loads of benefits from being a supporter and the more of you that do sign up, you know, the more of these videos I can make and the more I can just commit to being on YouTube as a full-time job. Uh, also, if you don't fancy um, doing a monthly subscription or if you feel like giving me a tip um, I've also signed up to Kofi or it might be pronounced coffee I've heard it pronounced both ways so I'm none the wiser but yeah link for that also coming up below oh that way yeah there we go that way <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for this one, I think the main influence has got to be the granddaddy of fingerstyle funk, Mr. Francis Rocco Prestia, best known for his work uh, playing bass for Tower of Power. Um, but obviously, Jacko was a guy who'd do this kind of thing quite a lot. And newer people, well, like Joe Dart, plenty of gospel people do this. If I've missed out anyone obvious, please leave a comment. There are three ways off the top of my head of muting the strings and getting a really funky, punchy sound where you get all the attack from the note, but none of the decay, so none of that, none of the note ringing out or anything like that. Uh, and it's really great for when, when you're playing 16s because you hear every single one, it's this kind of machine gun style effect and it's really cool. The first way, let's go back to Motown, James Jameson, famously put a bit of foam underneath the bridge of his bass or near the bridge. You can also palm mute. This is like a sort of guitar technique where your um, side of your palm is on the um, strings near the bridge. And you play either with your thumb or with the thumb and a couple of fingers. And that's cool. But however, if the right hand needs to be a little more busy, I find this particular technique works really, really well. So with your fretting hand, you're gonna be placing your first finger on the fret itself. And then the other fingers are just gonna rest lightly just across the strings there. So instead of getting this note ringing out, with varying degrees of pressure, you get a really nice sort of muted, funky, punchy tone. and that's all there is to it. However, you do need to then move your hand a lot more because your first finger is gonna be the primary um, finger on each fret, you know. So, um, okay, so that's a brief introduction to this style of playing. Let's very quickly break it down. One, two, three, four, one. Any tricky bits, I'd say that bit I just played at the end and also um, in the demo video, I did it as a sort of tag on the beginning. Timing wise, that can be tricky. It's offbeat 16ths. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... That took a few attempts by the way because it was very hard to talk and play, let alone when <laughs> it's not syncopated. Uh, so yeah. Um, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Right, yeah, okay, yeah. Hopefully once you've got the hang of that and you know the drums should be telegraphing that pretty strongly, uh, that bit shouldn't be too hard. A lot of stuff at full speed, which can be tricky for the right hand. Three, four, one. Three, four. Yeah, 16, 16, 16. Uh, but this this is not the fastest tempo, uh, 111 BPM. It's, uh, if we're getting on for like 120, 130, I think that would be a real challenge, but hopefully this is gonna be a, an intermediate challenge, I'd say. 
plenty of rests in between each phrase as well, so it does give you a little chance to have a little breather, and you're not just going, you know, that kind of thing. Like, uh, well, what is hip? The uh, the classic uh, <laughs> Rocco Prestia bassline. Notice how I went for the easier bit of that, and not the <laughs> that bit of it there. In terms of the theory I'm using, it's based around the minor pentatonic uh, with a few added notes. So you've got like, um, that's all minor pentatonic, all based around four notes. So we've got a passing note here. Um, but yeah, apart from that, not too um, tricky. And then the the variation at the end or the, the tag at the very beginning does use a C sharp um, and then chromatic back up to E. You could use this in a Dorian or Mixolydian sort of context, definitely. And yeah, just any any sort of like funk jam, <laughs> you know, hopefully you can take some of this and start to incorporate it into your playing. Anyway, that just about wraps it up from me. Uh, obviously, this is a quick click. You want to keep it short. However, if I have missed anything, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if you have any other questions, obviously, just hit me up. And yeah, nice one, guys. I'll see you next time.